hello friends today i am going to explain you what is fresnels by prism and an experiment to determine the wavelength of the monochromatic light now i am going to tell you what is fresnels by prism by by means to a prism which consists of two prisms and those two prisms are such that these two angles are equal to half degree and this is equal to 179 degrees and such prisms form a rationals by prism now if you think that this is a fresnels by prism here there is a source and the light rays travel in this way and you know a prism bends a light in such a way that uh, the angle of deviation is different for each prisms for different prisms and this ray also bends in this direction these two rays further go and interfere on a screen the person who is watching on this side feels that this ray is coming from yes one and this ray is coming from s2 what it means this s1 and s2 are the virtual image of the source s yes. and this is what a real fresnels by prism looks like and this prism is used in an experiment to determine the wavelength of monochromatic light most of the optics related experiments are done on the optical bench and optical bench looks somewhat like this these are the two rods which have scales on them it is these scales are to determine the distance between the optical component that are placed here and this is what a typical optical bench looks like and you all must have seen such optical benches in your physics laboratory now the experimental arrangement to determine the wavelength of monochromatic light first we need to mount the fresnels by prism on the optical bench and here there are two rods and these two rods are in such a way that these optical component can be moved front and backwards and this monochromatic source can be the sodium vapor lamp and here there is a slit which acts like a very narrow source and this narrow source is going to fall directly on the fresnels by prism and here the upper part which falls on the surface it moves towards this and the lower parts the lower part of the light which falls here will move in this direction and these both the directions will interfere on the screen this is the screen where the two coherent sources these are the two coherent sources that interfere and form an inter interference pattern and if we keep a micrometer ips here we will be able to see the interference pattern formed by the interference of these two sources now 
the theory behind the fresnel's biprism experiment the interference that is formed in the fresnel's biprism experiment is same as that as that of double slit experiment and the central bright fringe at o here at o we find a central bright fringe and beyond that we find the alternative dark and bright fringes this is bright fringe this is bright fringe and this is the central bright fringe and the length of this determines the intensity at this position the intensity at this position is less than this the intensity at this position is less than this and the intensity at, at this position is less than this similarly there is alternative dark and bright fringes the fringe width can be calculated using this formula that is beta is equal to lambda capital d divided by d and d is equal to a plus b this is the distance between the source and the eyepiece and lambda is the wavelength of the monochromatic light that we have used and small d is the distance between the two virtual sources what are the virtual sources s1 and s2 now we come to the second part of the experiment that is the determination of a wavelength of monochromatic light for this we need some initial adjustments and what are those initial adjustments yes is the narrow slit and this is the biprism and it is a micrometer ips and all these three components are mounted on the optical bench and these all are exactly perpendicular and at the same height and when we switch on the sodium vapor lamp the light falls on the prism and here we have some adjustments we are going to move this by prism and we need to get two vertical bright slit images after setting that keep this by prism constant and then move the ips in such a way that we find the interference pattern here we know formula for the fringe width that is beta is equal to lambda capital d divided by small d but we are not going to find the fringe width using this formula because we are going to determine the wavelength of light that is lambda so we know what is lambda lambda will be equal to d beta divided by capital d so for this we should have the value of beta and we should have the value of d and we have the value of capital d because we know that capital d is equal to a plus b a is the distance between the prism and the source and b is the distance between prism and the eyepiece and therefore when we observe the interference pattern we can see this kind of interference pattern in the field of micrometer eyepiece and when we are seeing this kind of view in the micrometer eyepiece we are going to fix the cross wire at one of the fringes and then move this upward or downward and count the number of the fringes you have crossed you have crossed n number of the fringes first you need to record the reading at this position and we see it as, as x naught and at this position you are uh, recording the reading as xn 
because it is the nth fringe and therefore we can have the value of beta and that will be equal to xn minus x naught divided by capital N. In this way we can find the value of beta. This is the final stage of the experiment. Here we are going to find the value of small d. For that we are going to introduce a lens and that lens should have a short focal length and it should be placed between by prism and the eyepiece the lens should be very near to the by prism and the convex lens is moved on the optical bench till we observe the sharp images in the eyepiece we are going to move the lens forward and backward and adjust and we are going to measure the distance between the two slit using the cross wire in the eyepiece and that we record it as d1 and the distance between the source and the lens is recorded as u and the distance between the lens and the eyepiece lens and eyepiece is recorded as v and therefore we will have a simple equation that is v by u is equal to d1 divided by d and we are going to give this as equation number one and here we are going to derive equation number two in this we are going to move this lens nearer to the eyepiece and then record this distance as v and record this distance as u and the moment of lens is done so as to get once again two vertical images of the slit and we are measuring the distance between these two vertical image of the slit and recording it as d2 and so using all these three values of v u and d2 so we are going to get the equation as u by v is equal to d2 by d now we name it as equation number two using equation number one and two from equation number one what we had equation number one is equal to v by u is equal to d1 by d and equation number two was u by v is equal to d2 by d just we are going to multiply both the equations so we get v by u into u by v and that is equal to d1 by d into d2 by and these all the four get cancelled and here we get the equation as d is equal to square root of d1 into d2 and at final we have the value of beta and we have value of small d and we have the value of capital D and therefore we get the value of lambda is equal to beta small d divided by capital D this is the formula for wavelength of the monochromatic light that we had used thank you